Hey guys, welcome back to the shop. A little chilly down here this morning, and uh, it's actually snowing at a pretty good clip outside. We're destined for somewhere between four and six inches. I don't know how much we got out there now, but either way, I don't like it. I thought we would kind of get away with a lot less snow this year, but past few weeks we've been getting everything we've been missing. But either way, I just have a couple of quick videos for you guys this week. I'm going to separate them into two parts, just because they're two completely different subjects. And one of them is on the nickel plate kit that I used to nickel plate the knobs for the toolbox that I showed in the previous video. A bunch of people had asked for that. A couple of people asked for the comments. I got a bunch of emails about it. So I'll throw up a quick video of how those worked. I actually videotaped it when I was doing the box. It just didn't make it into the video because the, I didn't want the video length to be that long. And then also we need to tram my mill and vise because we're going to be using that a lot on our next project and we're going to be doing that with one of these edge technology doodads here pro trams i've had this for a long time i've just never used it so it'll be your first time using this we'll be get going on this little casting project here in a little while i just need to order some off the shelf pots some bearings and some material to make the spindle and things like that i was just waiting for the beginning of the next month to, you know, pay your bills and see how much you have left to throw at this thing. And also, I've been kind of playing around with some new editing software and made a new opening for the video. So if you guys like that, comment down below and tell me what you think. In the meantime, let's get on to the two videos. Okay, so this is uh, made by Edge Technology. It is a head tramming system. There are multiple makers of a similar products as this. I think I believe Starrett makes one too. So basically what this is, and like I said, I've never used this even though this is dirty. It's just been kicking around the shop forever. It comes with instructions. This bar, uh, this is the half inch version, half inch shank version. A quick search online gave me prices for this anywhere between $100 and $130 depending on the vendor. So you got the actual tool here which is basically two indicators on an aluminum housing with a pin in there and that is probably a steel pin let me grab a magnet and just confirm that it is steel I actually think this is a magnet yep this is a magnet so let me yep so that shank is steel and these, the case is aluminum. And it comes with this calibration magnet. And you kind of get the idea how it's used. You put it in the spindle and then you tilt your head around until they both read the same. So let me stick this in the half inch collet. We'll get the cable up to, the table up to where we can see it. And we'll go about the calibration procedure for this. Okay, so we have everything mounted in here. What we're going to do is, I'm going to reach over you, because I'm on the opposite side to the quill, and I'm just going to preload this a little bit. These have a quarter inch travel, so I'm going to do about 50 thousandths or so, and lock the quill down, and then we're going to take our little gauge magnet, and we're going to slide it right underneath. I'm going to set it zero, and we're going to swing our other one over. set this at zero and then we're just gonna come back and double check and we're at zero there okay so when I pull this out now we're touching the table so these should read the same and you can see this one's reading 50 this one is reading 52 so we're 1,000 off so we can yaw the head a little bit and get that to even out all right, so the way you adjust the tilt of the head side to side is you're going to have to just, just barely slack off these four little bolts here, get you out the way, and then there's a pinion gear up here that will rotate the head. Okay, so we're just going to loosen up on these guys just a hair. There's two... There's three, and there's four, all right, and 
And I'm going the wrong way. Of course, right? Always go the wrong way first. That's just what you do. All right, by my eyes, those are bolted on 52. We're gonna snug up these bolts. And that seemed to have stayed pretty good. So by my eyes, we're pretty damn close there. So now we're gonna swing it 90 degrees and do the head tilt in the opposite direction. And this direction we're reading, sorry to get my head in the way, but I'm gonna have to a little bit. We're reading 51 and 53. So this same thing, there's, there's three bolts on the column here. Undo those, or loosen those three, and then there's another worm gear on the top to adjust it. So I'm gonna loosen these guys a little bit. Okay. So just by loosening that, you can see it pretty much fell in line Again, sorry for getting my head in the way, but 54 and 54 just by loosening those. So we're going to retighten it and see if it moves. Fifty-four, fifty-four. Alright, I'm going to call that good. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a standard indicator and we'll swing the table and see if there's that much of a difference to it. Okay, so now we're going to sweep this table the traditional way. So I have this zeroed right here. So we're at zero. Still at zero. Plus uh, about a half. Plus one. Plus one and a half. Plus one and a half plus one plus a half and we're back to back to zero so within one and a half just in those two quick steps I mean for a bridge port that's old and uh, you know tram it to the table that definitely has a little bit of wear that is not bad at all I can uh, kinda go with that now we gotta put the vise in place and we'll see if there's any difference in the tram on the vise itself and we will also uh, get that all squared. Okay, so we're gonna get the vise in place. So what I like to do is give a little coat of some WD here. Just to give it a little bit of protection underneath that vise. And give the bottom of the vise the same coat there. Alrighty, now without dropping this on my toes. Swing her in about to where we want it. Slide in our T nuts. Finger tight, push the vise all the way forward, and then we'll snug those down. And then we'll indicate along this rear fixed jaw. Okay, so back out, preload our indicator. Set zero. So we can already tell that we are to that side and give a little tap. Okay. 
Now I have power feed and I don't know why I'm not using it. Within about a half, maybe a little bit more, half to one. Let's see if we can get that even better. Or one and a half, so we just need a little bit more. Vicinity. It's within a half. Let me see if I can get it any better. I'm calling that good is that extra little hair will be chasing our tail so and like I said we ain't, this is a bridge port we ain't making things for NASA we're good to go all right so I'm not really worried about that 1,000 deviation that's really not that much I mean mill has some wear it, it's actually in, in really really good shape but like it's from the 70s it has somewhere you can actually get my indicator out the way here just to explain I mean it's not it's not bad at all it has the hot chrome ways you can see the the oil retention grooves the flaking here and then you can see it kind of go away up in here but it's in really good shape that one thousandth of an inch I'm not supremely worried about so this mill will be back in service I do have a travadial to mount to the front maybe we'll do a short video on that and we'll wait for those pots to come in and hopefully get going on that gear hub.